but yeah, I guess a question I've got for you that's completely more on topic. Um, when it comes to the setup, and I don't, uh, without asking you to go into excruciating detail, but it'd yeah. be cool to get some more detail on yes. for the water heater Bitcoin miner. Like, how does that work? Like, if you take me from like, I don't know, say you've got the power source and you plug in here and then the plug runs to yep. whatever. If you can yep. just step me step by step me through it so I can understand that and people yep. out there can understand. And for anyone listening, uh, who's sharing screen now, I advise you to watch the video if you can, but obviously we'll describe it as best as you can yes. um, for the people listening. Or if you also go to my Twitter's account at Schnitzel, there is pictures on there. But yeah, I'm trying to explain it. So the first thing, Imagine any water heater. So a water heater usually is a cylindrical long piece that, um, like I said, usually it's like 40 gallons, which is 120 liters. There are bigger ones or smaller ones. It doesn't really matter. But basically you have one input and one output. Um, the input puts cold water in from, your, um, from wherever you get your water. So it's the same water source as the cold water tap on your house. And, um, and it has an output where the hot water goes out that goes then to the hot water tap, the showers and all the things. And usually inside that water heater that is insulated quite well um, has some kind of heat source. Now there are either electrical ones. So they literally just have like a hot water kettle like these um, water coils um, or heating coils. Or if you have a propane gas one, it has a burner under it and it's just a really big hot pot that just has a burner at the bottom and it heats up air. So, or it heats the water. So that's the, that's the standard system. Now, one of the special things is that the cold water inlets so where the cold water goes in, there's actually a pipe inside the water heater that puts out the, the cold water at the bottom because Water, if you heat it up, automatically will separate in the warmer and colder part. And while you're taking a shower, there is cold water rushing into the tank. If you would put the cold water on the top, it would immediately mix with the hot water that is there and your cold shower and your shower will get cold and it wouldn't be fun at all. That's why there's a pipe inside the water heater that puts it in. There's also some that actually have the inlet at the bottom. It doesn't matter. Just imagine water goes in at the bottom, comes hot out at the top. So that's the default system. Now, um, and also the pressure comes from the normal uh, municipal pressure. So there's no pump or anything that pressurizes the hot water. It's just because there's pressure on the cold water side, the hot water side also has pressure. And um, so if the, the um, wherever you get your water from, there is constant pressure there. And that's actually what the pressure does inside um, your house. There are pressure increase in pumps and stuff like that, but we're not going to look into this. Um, so yeah. And so basically what I had to do is to figure out a way, how can I heat the water that is in the tank? Because I very fast, I was aware that I couldn't build what is called a tankless water heater. There are now existing and basically what a tankless water heat means, it's a tank and without a tank. So they generate so much heat with either mostly propane or electricity that the water, while it's passing through the tankless water heater, gets heated up enough that it's hot enough on the other side. Um, but that's not very common. Most water heating systems today still have a tank. So they actually run only for a few amount of time. And they always run before you actually use the hot water. That means you're, uh, you take a shower, you use, let's say, 20 liters of water. And so the tank now is cooler than it was before. And the heater now runs until the water is back up to 60 degrees Celsius, 140 Fahrenheit. That's the standard temperature. And then the water heater turns off. So there is a thermostat or multiple of them inside the water heater. On the picture, we see that um, behind these covers, um, there's a thermostat there that constantly measures the temperature of the water. And if it's below 140 degrees, the, the heating coil runs. If it's above 140 degrees, it stops. And so with that, you basically have hot water available all the time. And um, that also means your water heater actually loses a little bit of hot water over time. Uh, mine, for example, it maybe gets turned on every couple of hours just because it needs to bring back the water back up. So for anybody that has like a house that stands empty for a whole week, um, think about your water heater is actually running the whole time. So that's maybe something you could actually turn it off if you want to save some energy. There's some bacterial discussions around this. So 
research that, just, you know, it uses a lot of energy. Um, so that's basically how the water heater itself works. Now, um, like I said, I had to figure out how to actually get the heat in there, because the best would, of course, we would just put the miner into the water. But as we figured out before, that's going to destroy the miner. Um, you get electrocuted, not the things we want. So um, what I've done, and that's what most immersion systems are, is the miner is actually inside an oil. It's called, um, the technical term is a dielectrical fluid, which means it's a fluid that does not conduct electricity. Um, it's some kind of oil. It's specialized for that usage. So there's actually companies out there um, that create these fluids specifically for miners. Because the problem is, because you put something into it, you need, need to make sure that it doesn't react with it. There are some people that just use a normal mineral oil or um, transmission fluid and things like that. They all are not water-based, so they all don't conduct electricity but they might be interact with the electrical pieces on your miner. And I've seen pictures where like pieces of the PCB just fell off <laughs> or it discolors the whole thing or it actually destroys it because it like attacks one of them with the paints or some of the coatings and stuff like that. So you wanna make sure that the oil that you use works together with, <clears throat> with the miner and you can find online, you can buy them and no problem at all. And so basically what you wanna do is you wanna heat up the oil with your miner and you want to somehow exchange the hot oil with the cool water. And that's what you use a heat exchanger for. So that's on the picture is that right thingy there. It's this, um, I'm using a plate heat exchanger. There's a lot of different types, but that's the most common. But basically what you can imagine it that this plate exchanger has four holes where you can put the liquid in that comes out at the bottom and you can put in the liquid at the bottom and it comes out at the top. And these two liquids, they're gonna go through this heat exchanger and they're gonna go, go through different plates. So there's very thin plates that have a very a tiny gap in between them and the liquid can go through there, but it's built in a way that they have to go past each other, but they never touch each other because you don't wanna mix the oil with the water. But because of electrical, um, or with the, because there's a heat difference, the hot oil that touches the cooler water will automatically pass its heat to the water because any heat system always wants to, it always wants to have an equilibrium, an equilibrium um, between the temperatures. So if you pump in hot oil and you also pump through cold water, the oil will be cooler, the water will be hotter. And if you do this enough, eventually all the heat from the oil will go into the water. And so that's basically explains the two loops. So I have one loop. I'm gonna show you another picture here. So I basically have what I call the bit cool loop where the bit cool, that's the, the liquid by the way, the oil is called bit cool. And um, it go, it's pumped in at the bottom of the miner, passes through the miner, from the bottom to the top, use this that um, because heat rises, so it automatically goes up. It then passes in this small reservoir on the side where it's then sucked in again and put all the way around the tank. Then there's a pump that runs the whole thing. The bit cool goes into the heat exchanger, comes out of the heat exchanger and goes back uh, into the tank below the miner. So that's one of the loops that's separated. That's only the oil that runs all the time. And so this oil gets heated up and gets cooled at the heat exchanger and passes through it again. And then we have the blue loop, which is the water loop. So I need to somehow take the, because in the tank, the whole water has roughly the same temperature and I wanna raise the temperature of all the water higher so I need to take all the water out, heat it up and basically create a second loop. And so I'm using the drain plug. So pretty much every water heater has a drain plug at the bottom to take out, usually like to drain it if you need to do maintenance. So I'm taking out water there, pump it to the top where the heat exchanger sits, pass it through the heat exchanger and put it back into the inlet, the normal cold water inlet of the, of the, heat ex, uh, of the water tank. And then, as we discussed, there's a pipe in it that puts it to the bottom. And so I basically just run this all the time. And this then will also, will slowly 
heat up the water inside the water tank. And then using the actual thermostats that are usually used to turn on the electrical coils on and off, I'm using them to have a little computer, which is in the back, that basically monitors these thermostats. And when the thermostat turns on, it tells the whole system to turn on. If the thermostat turns off, which means the water is hot enough, it tells the whole system to turn off. And that's, that's the whole system. So I'm basically just replacing the heat coils that are usually inside the water tank. I'm having an ex an heat exchanger outside and I just run the cool water through it all the time and the bit cool on the other side. And that's how the heat exchange actually works. How long does it take the uh, miner to heat the, the full uh, amount of water, like the 120 liters or whatever? I've never tested that because um, I don't know. Like it, usually the water heater is always hot, um, but I do know. So that's maybe a thing. So my water heater is three to 4,000 watts, which is like the highest one you can get in the US with, um, with normal residential electrical systems. Um, and so, um, but the miner is only like 1,600 watts. So it's like a third of what the actual heater has. So it also takes three times as long to heat up the water again. But I mean, in normal usage with my wife, even if we just shower right after each other, um, when the water heater is hot, so let's say in the morning you take a shower, it's at 140 Celsius, 60 degrees, um, because it was heated up. And then you use, let's say 40 liters, 50 liters, which is half of the tank. It takes maybe three, four hours again, to heat up the whole thing. So yeah, so if you have like, if you would have a lot of water usage, um, yeah, it, it could happen that, um, that maybe you have some cold water for a short amount of time. But um, that's why I said, like I, I'm, I wanna play with actually replace or adding more miners so that I have the exact same amount of wattage than the water heater. Um, because then I can really do comparisons and figure out efficiency losses and things like that. Um, I guess it doesn't matter uh, if it takes longer because you just get more stats, right? Yeah, it, no, it doesn't matter at all. Yeah, um, it's just a question like, how fast do you need hot water again? So let's say you take a shower, your dishwasher runs and your, clo your clothes washer as well, and you use it all of them. Yeah, you're going to run out of hot water at one point. Now, a normal water heater would work with 4,000 watts against this to heat up the water. The miner mine is now working on with 1,600. But yeah, if, if you don't have massive peaks of hot water usage, well, it, it doesn't matter at all. Yeah, um, I like, like in Nigeria, in Nigeria, we do have like water heaters and uh, they tend to work like most often, like you explained, like once the water is uh, you know, at boiling point, it's obviously, you know, shuts down. And, you know, I, I think the goal of, you know this you know system that you build is basically it might not you know it might not be it, you it the end goal might not be for people to actually be profitable you know it might just be you know to be able to you know um it's like you said it's free money you know people can you know mine yep. bitcoins and be able to offset their electricity bills without having to actually you know take money from elsewhere to offset you know the you know electricity electricity bills even if to an you know a large extent so what I was going to ask, uh, what I was going to say is, you know, once the water gets to boiling point, it shuts down. If now, if I was, you know, using your system at the point where the heater stops, you know, uh, you know, shuts down, you know, because yep. it's already hit boiling point, will the miner stop working at that point, or would you, would it, you know, since it's stop electricity, it will keep on, you know, working, or it will shut down at the same time at the same time the um, heater shuts down so right now um the miners only run while the tank basically says i'm not yet at 140 or 60 degrees celsius as soon as the water inside reaches that temperature the miner shuts off completely the pump stop the whole system just idles and waits until the next time hot water is used again that means my miners right now they only run for a couple of hours per day. Um, um, if you wanted to run the miners continuously, you would need to find a way how to get the heat away from the miners. 
because they continuously generate 1,600 watts, and that's a lot of energy. That's so there's a lot. Water is going to get hot really hard, uh, really fast, and so you would need to figure out a way. Now, that's one thing that I haven't built yet, and I, that's something I want to look into. You could, for example, um, have a radiator outside, like a regular car radiator outside, and just have like an, an a switching valve that basically realizes when the hot water is hot, then it basically puts the bit cool outside and radiates the heat away outside. Then you could run the miner 24 seven um, because you basically, as soon as the water is hot enough, you can go there. And there are people that I've seen that build that specifically. My goal is actually what you see on the picture on the left side, that's my whole house heating system. So our house is 130 years old and it's heated by an oil furnace that heats up water and the hot water is circulated through radiators in the house um, where then the heat gets, that's how the house is heated. So my hope is that for the winter, I will have like after the pump, I will have a little tea and then as soon that of like the liquid. And then as soon as the water is hot enough, the hot water, uh, the, sorry, the hot bit cool all goes on the left side and heats up the water that circulates throughout the house. And with that, I can then heat the house with the exact same system. Um, and then maybe eventually we're gonna build a pool and then we wanna heat the pool as well. And so if you add all these systems together, I think you can then actually run the miners 24 seven and then it makes sense again to do, put in as efficient miners as possible in like an S19 or whatever is gonna be the most efficient one at that time. Michael, this was amazing. Thank you for, uh explaining this to us uh You're very well Lawrence had to cut out he he had another call like i explained to you on twitter but um i really appreciate you coming on the show and breaking this all down for us like when i saw your tweets i was super interested and i'm not really like technical like that so for you to come on here and kind of give us a uh layman's terms explanation of how this all worked out was just amazing um i really appreciate you coming on the show Oh, you're welcome. No, I'm I'm super interested. Like I said in the beginning, for me, this is really is to learn a lot, but also to share a lot. Um, I really think big, if Bitcoin teaches us one thing, that open source or sharing is super important, and um, and that's why I'm doing all of this. So my end goal is really to have videos, um, parts lists, explaining systems, how the whole system works. I already open sourced all the code that I wrote, like. Uh, like I mentioned, there's a little computer that actually interacts with the miners. That's all open source. You can find it on my GitHub. Um, so yeah, that's really that's the that's the plan to teach about this as many people as possible because I think there's still a lot of doubters of Bitcoin and telling them about like about the money system and all that stuff. Sure, that's possible. But at least my experience now is that a lot of people suddenly are very interested in Bitcoin because they realize they can now heat their house with it and they can make money with it. And so they don't care about the price really anymore. They just care about, did I make any money? And so, and I think that's, so it's a good, good, good way to orange peel um, as many people. And so that's why I'm sharing it, that everybody can use this and convince all your friends, family, and neighbors, and whatever else you want to convince um, to use Bitcoin. That Bitcoin is really something that is for the greater good for people. And um, yeah, you can literally get paid while showering. So why? who doesn't want that? Yeah, no, I agree. Um, I, we interviewed Vlad Kostea and also Econo Alchemist, and they're both big proponents of like home mining to decentralize the, the mining network to kind of counter what you were talking about, about corporate mining, perhaps censoring uh, transactions and stuff like that. So I see this as one of the most viable ways to get no coiners into mining and to be accumulating Bitcoin in kind of like a risk-free way where they don't have to go out of their comfort zone to, to get some sats. Right. And then once they have some, then they can start using them. Yeah, I like shout to earn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my wife and I were joking. Like right now, the S nine is not profitable, so it doesn't really make sense to use more energy than we would use anyway. But there is maybe a time where the S nine is profitable again, and they were like, "Wait, so then are we showering twenty four hours a day? Because the more you shower, the more we, like the more money." The calculation is a slight bit wrong because we, that doesn't calculate into water. That also costs money, of course. But maybe actually, if the if the if if Bitcoin price is so high that you can also pay the water with it, 
yeah, you could you could open up a shower system for all your friends and neighbors and come shower for free in your house because you're gonna just make more money. So I or think there's a lot of things. Your jacuzzi with it, like during yeah. the winter. Yeah. No, totally. Yeah. yeah. Well, Michael, thanks again. Um, I think we're gonna wrap it up because I don't want to take too much of your time. We're a little bit over the hour that I originally no asked you. To. But um, anytime you want to come back, if you have new developments, man, just hit me up and uh, I'd be happy to interview you again. Sure. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm definitely planning to do more. And like I said, the cold season is going to come at one point and I want to heat the house. And so there's definitely some updates that we can talk about. Sweet. Perfect. Uh, Jerry, did you have one last question or anything before Michael goes? Yes. Uh, how many, how many uh, minus does it take? Uh, does the number of minus determine the size of the, the bead pool? Like, for instance, you want to heat, uh, what, I'm assuming that what it takes to heat like a regular home water heater is not exactly the same number of minus it would take to heat like your house or a It will just, it's possible because the miner itself, they all get, they all are able to heat the bit cool to 150 Fahrenheit. And that's one single one or a thousand of them. So they can't get it hotter. So the, 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 the temperature that you reach is the same. The question is more like how fast. Um, so my house, for example, that um, it would just probably take much longer to heat the house initially. Um, so, but that's actually what I'm all trying to figure out. Like that's one of the reasons that you see all these sensors and temperature measurements and that stuff. Like that's not necessary for the system in any way to work. It's more about gathering data so that we can create comparisons. So we can say like, what is the perfect size if I'm ever deciding to build this or if anybody else is interested in the data to maybe create a company like that, reach out. Um, because yeah, I really want to gather as much as data as I can to, to specifically answer these questions. Um, but no, it doesn't matter how many you have. Um, it's just the more you have, the faster it is, whatever you're trying to do. Speaking of reaching out, why don't you give people your uh, social media so that they can reach out to you? Yeah, they find me on Twitter, um, Schnitzel, the German veal dish. Um, that's me. And um, yeah, you find me there. You find a lot of the data there. I probably tweet once a day about this with like new data. And um, and yeah, and if anybody's interested in supporting it, there's also a donations link there. Like I said, it's a completely open source system or project. I'm publishing all the data, everything that I built from it. So if anybody wants to make it a bit faster available. I'm planning on videos, I'm planning on, on build guides. Um, yeah, shoot me some sets or shoot the project some sets because it's definitely gonna make it faster um, for all it to happen. Well, Michael, thanks again. Um, to our listeners, thank you for listening. You're not gonna get an eloquent outro because Lawrence has left and I'm not as well-spoken as he is, but uh, thanks again. And I hope you guys enjoyed this conversation. Mm -hmm.